Following on from the last video where we went through some theory on categorical, discrete numerical and continuous numerical data types and how to tell the difference, uh, here are some practice questions. There are 15 questions up on the screen, so hit pause, um, go, through you, go through them, have a practice, see what you think they are, and then come back to this video and we will go through the answers. Okay, so now I'll go over the answers to these practice questions. The first one here is uh, height in centimetres. So when we answer to height, we're going to be giving a number answer. So it's going to be numerical. Um, and remembering that discrete can only be certain answers and continuous can be measured really, really specifically down to a certain point. Um, so height, we can measure to within an, within an inch of its life if we, if we want to. So this one is going to be a continuous numerical. Nationality. Okay, so what responses could you give to that um, if you were asked that in a survey? You might say Australian, you might say New Zealand, you might say uh, British, you might say American, Fijian, you know, Italian. Um, and those are all word answers, which makes this one categorical. Okay, so this next one here, number of CDs sold by an artist. Well, if you think about that, that's going to be a number response. But can we say we sold, you know, um, 3.5 CDs? You can't have decimal places because you can either have a whole CD or not. Um, so you can't sell like 7.25673 CDs. Um, you've, you've sold the CD or you haven't, which means that you can only give certain answers. So it is numerical, but it's going to be discrete numerical. Okay, so number four, how many people live in your household? Okay, again, well, this is going to be a number. There might be four people, there might be five people, there might be one person, but you can't have a decimal of a person. You can't have 2.5 living people living in your household. So it's a number, but it can only be certain answers, making it discrete numerical. And number five, time taken to run 100 metres. Well, Usain Bolt runs the 100 metres in about 10 seconds, I think, 9.76 something, and they measure that very, very specifically. And we've got decimal places there. And depending on the technology, you could measure a time to many, many decimal places. So it's a number answer, which makes it numerical data, but you can give any great number of specifics um, in terms of a measurement of time. So that one is going to be continuous numerical. Next one there, favourite colour. Well, these are going to be all word responses, aren't they? We're not going to say my favourite colour is two. The favourite colour is going to be blue, green, red, yellow. They're all word responses. They're categories, making this categorical. Now, the distance that you live from school, you could live um, 1K, you could live 2K, you could live 3K, and those sound like specific, um, specific answers. But if we wanted to, we could give decimal places. We could say 3.5k, we could say 3.571269, you know, down to however many decimal places you want. So distance uh, is a continuous numerical. Number eight, the number of chocolates in a box. Okay, so say we've got a box of chocolates that has 100 chocolates in it, and I've eaten a couple, so we've now got 98. Um, in this sense, I mean, you could maybe have 98.5 chocolates if I've eaten half of one of them, but unopened chocolates in a box, you know, on a shelf, how many does it come sold with? You can't have half of a chocolate. So that is a discrete numerical. And the reason for that, again, I'll just say that one again because it's a little bit tricky. The number of something um, in a set if it's a whole item, like a person, you can't have 0.5 of a person, you can't have 0.5 of a CD that you've sold. Number of chocolates in a box is one of those things where it only makes sense to give a whole number as the answer. Um, so number of chocolates in a box is discrete. Just move down here. 
Number nine, how much you agree with a certain statement. Well, if I asked my the people I was surveying to give me a number answer for this, I want you to say one, two or three in terms of do you agree with the following statement. What they've given me is a number answer. So you might be tricked into thinking that this is a numerical um, response. But if you have a look, what I've done there is say one is just a label for agree, two is just a label for neutral, and three is just a label for disagree. So really what I've done is put these into labels, I've put them into categories. It's like saying hazel eyes or brown eyes uh, because they're just three words that are these responses. These are the three words you could be responding to. But I've just used a number to represent that. But I can't add these numbers together and say, you know, what is the average or things like that because it wouldn't make sense. What is the average of I am neutral? Um, you can't you can't do mathematics to these numbers because they're really just labels. So this one is actually categorical. Now daily temperature. That's going to be a number response. Today it was 20 degrees. Now was it 20? Was it 20.125793? However, however much I want to measure that, temperature is something I can go really down specifically into. So that makes it continuous numerical. Now capacity of a water tank. That one I can measure really, really specifically as well, can't I? I can say there's 100 litres. I can say there's 100 point five, nine, however many I want to measure it, just depending on the instruments that I have to measure the, the capacity of water. So that, just like the previous one, is a continuous numerical. Number of pages in a book. Can you have half a page in a book? You can't. Can you have 0 0.7569 however many of a page? You either have the page or you don't have the page, which means that, though you're going to give me a number answer, there are 100 pages in this book, I, you can only say 199 or 101. You can't say the numbers in between that. You can't say decimal places. So that makes it discrete numerical. The length of your foot. Okay, well, if we want to measure your foot, we get out the ruler and we say your foot is, you know, how, how long is a foot? 30 centimetres long. So it could be 30, it could be 30.5912237, whatever we're using to measure it. So that's one of those ones we can measure really, really specifically within an inch of its life, which makes it continuous numerical. Now, unlike the length of your foot, the shoe size, you can only give certain responses to. You could say you're a size 7, you could say you're a size 7.5, but you can't say you're a size 7.435, because that just doesn't make any sense, right? So the numbers there are discrete. Okay, and this last one here is a bit of a stumper, which is why I've put it in there. If I asked you what your postcode is, say you live in the postcode 3000, that is a label for the suburb of Melbourne, isn't it? Now, if I live in the postcode 314, five, nine, where, wherever that happens to be. I don't know what suburb that is, but let's just call that town. 3159 is a label for town, isn't it? If I added these numbers up, if I got 10 people to tell me what their postcodes were, um, one person said, you know, 3000, one person said 3159, one person said 3285, what have you, what have you, and I added them up and I said, okay, the average of these postcodes is blah. Can I really deduct any information from that? Average of postcodes doesn't tell me anything because what, what would an average of a postcode tell me? Not even roughly where they live because um, you, suburbs just don't work like that. Um, so postcode is really just a label when you think about it. It's something to make the postie's life easier because they enter 3000 into the computer, the letter goes to the right place without having them to type out Melbourne and think where you know the, the CBD is. So postcode, even though you're actually giving me a number, this here is a number. So you might think maybe it's discrete numerical because you can only give me certain number responses. But if I can't do something mathematical to those numbers, I can't say what's the minimum of all of this data, what's the maximum of all of this data, um, what's the average, what's, what's the midpoint. If I can't 
manipulate the numbers, then they're no good to me. They're, they're just a label. So this is one of those times where the number response that you're actually getting is in fact categorical because it's just a label for the suburb. It's like this example up here where we replaced numbers for these words. We had agree, neutral and disagree and those are word responses. We just got someone to tell us a number instead to represent them, one, two and three. Postcode is just like that. Instead of saying I live in the city of Melbourne, you'll say I live in 3000. So postcode, categorical. So that's it for types of data. In the next video, we'll look at some of the different ways we represent the different types of data and we'll put some numerical data into frequency tables.